everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about anxiety eating and how to stop anxiety eating. And one of the ways to stop it is to renew your mind about eating so that we see that eating isn't going to help us uh, become less anxious. But another way to let go of anxiety eating is to renew our mind about the anxiety itself. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to renew our mind with some uh, exercise and say goodbye to emotional eating on page 170. So I'm going to go through this exercise uh, while uh, we do this video. And so think about anxious. Think about right now, what are you anxious about? You know, maybe you're anxious about your kids or you're anxious about the world. I mean, what's happening in the world? What's going to happen? You might be anxious about finances, you know, with rising inflation, with crazy housing costs, or maybe you're anxious about a decision you're going to make. So you might think, I've got to choose the best decision or my life is going to be ruined, right? So sometimes we're anxious about things that are actually happening. And sometimes we're anxious about decisions because uh, we don't know if we're making the right decision or not. And so this is fresh in my mind because we just... Uh, sold our house. Uh, right now we're living in a furnished a, a furnished little house in a Helena, Montana, but we sold the house we lived in for 20 years. We left the community we, we loved and we lived in for 30 years. And so for at least a couple months there, I was uh, very anxious and I'd be really careful not to eat too much, to keep going to God for help, uh, to overcome that anxiety. So this is fresh in my mind as I go through this renewing exercise and I hope I can help you. So as you go through this, if you have the book, Say Goodbye to Emotional Eating, maybe go through the chart on your own first and then and then see what I have to say about it too. Because sometimes it helps to see how other people do things that can help us think about our things too, okay? So in this chart, um, it's an option chart. What option charts do is they, they help you evaluate the options you're currently taking and they help you see how is this affecting my life okay so it's not like okay should i do this this or this you're kind of looking at what am i already doing and then you know what does god want me to do how does he want me to handle this and then we compare what the results are going to be and see what the results are in black and white that can help us think okay i need to stop that behavior that's crazy okay so the first option i always put on the chart is um, the option I want to have happen. So when I made this move, uh, the reason we made the move is my husband is doing travel physical therapy and it was too hard to maintain our home. So we're like, let's get rid of the home and we'll just be without a home for a little while and travel. We'll travel for three months at a time. Okay, so the first option is know for sure that things will turn out the way I want them to turn out. Okay, in other words, I want to make sure I'm not going to get priced out of the market. If I move back to Hamilton, I want to make sure... I like this new lifestyle that we can uh, you know, afford to buy again, that the housing market won't go crazy. So all these things, I wanna know for sure. I wanna know for sure I'm not gonna regret that move. Okay, that's, that's not an option, right? There's no way we can know for sure. And same thing with whatever you're worried about. If you're worried about the economy, there's no way you can know for sure it's gonna keep going strong. You know, you're, whatever country you're living in, that whole economy could collapse. So up at the top, I have three things I want. I want things to turn out the way I want. So think about your worry. What do you want to happen? I want peace and joy. I want to be happy. I want to be peaceful and I want to be close to God. So you can put whatever you want up at the top. I usually always put peace and joy. I usually always put close to God. Um, and then you can put whatever you, other, you want in the third column. Okay, so I cross out the option that I can't have knowing what's, how things are going to turn out. And then I go to the next, next line. Okay, here's one option I could do. I could continue to obsess and fret about things and I'm always imagine the worst case scenario. And that is one of the things I do. And if you're imagining worst case scenario in your worry, uh, <laughs> that's gonna cause you to obsess and fret, right? Some people out there, they imagine best case scenario. Maybe you're one of them. If you are that type of person, chances are you're not a worrier. But a lot of us imagine worst case scenario. Okay, so then I look at the top column. Is that going to help things to turn out the way I want them to turn out? No, it's not, right? Because when we're imagining worst case scenario, we don't really take actions to, to help things turn out well. I mean, just think of the Israelites um, coming out of Egypt and they're getting to the promised land. God had already uh, taken them to the promised land. He said, you're going to get it. 
They sent out the spies. Okay, some of the spies said, oh no, there's giants there. They're gonna kill us. And, and two of the spies, uh, Caleb and Joshua said, no, um, God said we're gonna take the land. We can take the land, right? But the people, the Israelites are always imagining worst case scenario, so paralyze them. They wanted to go back to Egypt. They're complaining. They're doing all these sorts of things. Life turned out way worse because they weren't trusting in God's promise. They were imagining worst case scenario. So that does not help us um, turn things around to the way we want them to be, right? And also, you know, Jesus said, you know, you can't add a day of your life by worrying. So worrying doesn't help us at all. Obsessing, fretting doesn't help. Okay, it doesn't make us peace and joyful. That's the next calm. No, it, it makes us uh, stress out, right? And when I was imagining worst case scenario, thinking of all the things that could happen, I was anxious. I was stressed out. Does it make us close to God? No, it doesn't. And here's what I found. Whenever I have intense, super intense emotions for extended period of time, it usually points out an idol in your life. Okay, so for me, I think my idol was best life possible, most fun life possible, and also financial security. So those were the two things I was caring about. And that affected my relationship with God because God wants me to have life be about him alone, okay? So think about your worry, okay? Is there something that you care about more than God wants you to care about? You know, it's easy to put our kids in an idolatry position. It's easy to put a relationship in an idolatry position. So all these things, um, they're not bad things, but God wants us to hold them in open hands because God wants us to love him the most. And interestingly, when we love him the most, when we're willing to let everything else go, um, that's when we feel closest to him. That's when we're the, the most happy, the most peaceful, the most joyful. So after we made that move, now we're in our, our little house in Helena. That's where my husband's working for three months. I am feeling pretty peaceful and joyful. But the reason I'm feeling peaceful and joyful isn't because I now know that I'm going to be happy with this decision. It's because I've worked through this enough. I've gone to God for help enough with it that I'm holding it with open hands. I'm like, okay, God. Whatever happens, um, you know, you're the most important and I'm feeling close to him again. So this is something we work out as we renew our mind. Okay, another option, this is another option in the book, is try to avoid thinking about things and drown my worries in ice cream, alcohol, Netflix, novels, etc. Okay, so what's your go-to when you're worried? Um, do you escape with one of our options, right? And so my go-to would be emotional eating and <laughs> be ice cream or it's like oh we need a blizzard in fact during when we were first decluttering and moving we were like on a no sweets kick and i told scott i said if we hadn't been this no sweets kick i think i would have gained five pounds in this because i'm sure every night i would have said we deserve a blizzard after all this and all that stress so anyway that's one of our options is that going to help things turn out the way we want them to nope <laughs> escape doesn't change anything it, it will also even add more negative things and make me just gain weight. So not only would it not reassure that my future is going to be good, it's also going to reassure that my health future is going to be bad if I eat all the time, right? Okay, will that give me peace and joy? Well, I would say if I go get a blizzard, that is going to give me peace and joy for about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, however long it takes me to drive to the Dairy Queen and eat it. And maybe another 20 minutes afterwards. <laughs> but after that, no, it doesn't give us peace and joy. Um, doesn't satisfy. Sweets don't satisfy. And here's the other interesting thing. I found that sweets don't even satisfy uh, physically all the time. I think the rate in my life maybe is about 50%. So say I go to a bakery, I get something good to eat. And I think, oh, this is going to be so good. A lot of times it's not that good. So even the sweets themselves don't always satisfy. Okay, is it gonna make me close to God? So is it gonna make me close to God if every time I'm worried about the future and whether I made the right decision, I turn to food? No, it's not. Okay, I lived in a state of worry for a at least a couple months, if not longer. But I kept pursuing God during that time. I kept having my quiet times, I kept renewing my mind. And now a few months later, I grew through that experience. Um, I grew to hold those things more lightly. I became closer to God. I became more like him. But that wouldn't have happened if I'd gone to food every time. Okay, so I can't remember if I already did that next column, but uh, yeah, I think I already did maybe the closest to God. So anyway, 
going to God helps us become close to him, even if we don't feel close in that moment, because I was not feeling close to God during that time of extreme anxiety, but it leads to closeness to God in the future, which is where I'm at right now again. Okay, the third option was keep talking about my worries with a loved one and ask them for reassurance that things will turn out okay. Okay, is that gonna help things turn out okay? No, just because they reassure me that things are gonna turn out okay, that doesn't mean they're going to, right? That just kind of shows what the other person's like. Some will be honest and will say, I don't know, and some will you know, want me to be happy, and so they'll reassure me, or they're just a comforting person, but it's gonna make no difference in the outcome. Okay, will that bring peace and joy? Okay, will only bring peace and joy if that person has the power to make things turn out okay, and that person does not have the power to make things turn out okay, so ultimately, no, it doesn't bring peace and joy. And, and also, too, when you ask them, a lot of times it's like, they're not gonna give enough reassurance. Um, they won't be as reassuring as you want them to be, so that won't give you peace and joy anyway. Okay, will it bring me closer to God? Nope, because I'm relying on that other person. I'm putting that other person in the God position. I'm not going to God for help. Okay, this other option, the next option I have is try everything I can to control the situation so things turn out okay, even when it's a situation I can't control. Now, this is not the type of person I normally am. Normally, I'm the person that would tend to go towards escape. But some of you guys are super on the ball. You might be um, a type A personality. And so you're the type of person who's like, I'm gonna go do whatever I can. This can sometimes work. And you know, people like me, I have to learn to be more like that. I have to learn to be more like, okay, what do I need to do? Like say, if I'm worried about finances, you know, do I need to get a job? Do I need whatever? I need to think about what I can do. But if you're a person who tends to err more on the side of controlling too much, then you need to recognize you can't control everything you want to control. And so what you really need to do is acceptance, okay? Um, some things you can put as much effort in as you want, but they're not going to make things turn out the way you want them to be because you're not in control of everything. In fact, I was just uh, reading a book. I can't remember who it was by. But anyway, they were talking about godly desires versus godly goals. I think it was uh, Neil Anderson. But anyway, he was saying uh, a desire is something we want, but we have to rely on somebody else to get it. So I might have a desire for a good marriage. A goal is something that I'm more in control of. I can't control that have a good marriage because the other person is also involved in it and they might not do the things they need to do to have a good marriage. But I could make a goal of working on my faults that contribute to a bad marriage. Does that make does that make sense? So um, when you think of your worries, think of you know what are desires, what are goals, what can you have more control in the outcome? And of course, you know ultimately we don't. God is the one in control, and sometimes in these worrisome situations, it reminds us of that um, because we can kind of go through life where everything's turning out okay. It's like we feel like we're in control. We really aren't. <laughs> we just think we're in control because things are going well, but we can't control everything we want to control. So, we'll try everything I try everything I can to control the situation. Will that lead to things turning out the way I want? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, for me, no, it wouldn't because I can't control. I can't guarantee I'm not going to regret that decision. Okay, peace and joy will lead to peace and joy. No, because if you're going into control mood, you're anxious. Okay, if you're just going into, oh, let me make a list of things I can do to help this situation and calmly do them, that's not going to lead to anxiety. But if you're like, oh, I have to do this, boom, 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 that's going to lead to anxiety and uh, non-peace, non-joy, right? Because we're doing it in a clutch hands position where this has to work, right? You have to open our hands. Will that lead to intimacy to God? No, because we're just relying on our own efforts. So we need to put that time into relying on God, relying on our relationship with him and trusting him. We're not relying on him to give us a great life. Uh, we're relying on him to, um, you know, take care of us no matter what, in the sense of take care of us spiritually no matter what. Uh, and, and look on eternal life. Look past the current situation to eternal life. And also remember we can be content in any situation. So look at that, that's the last option. Look at the situation from a biblical perspective, put my hope in God, rather in things turning out the way I want, dwell on the good, be thankful, take any action steps that God wants me to take and accept that my fear comes true, might, might come true. 
here's the thing we can't have peace and joy until we accept the fact that our fear come may come true but we have to remember if it comes true we're not helpless um there are things we can do to still make life good we can still rely on god he's in ultimate control and uh we we aren't helpless because we have the king of the universe as our god so will that lead to things turn out the way i want maybe maybe not but here's the thing if things don't turn out the way i want if we're taking all those steps we won't care so much if things don't turn out the way we want because we'll be maturing in our walk with god and our character so that we're becoming a person who's content no matter what happens because life is about god okay it also might help things turn out the way we want if there are action steps we can take but the nice thing is no matter what happens um we'll be okay we'll be content with life and we can learn to be content in all situations okay will it lead to peace and joy yes all those things lead to peace and joy will it lead to intimacy with god yes that's what leads to intimacy with god and you know uh, also you know read matthew 11 28 to 30. come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i'm gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. okay if i'm trying to have the burden of best life possible or safest life possible or all my loved ones safe happy all those if that's my uh sole desire in life or my biggest desire in life that's a heavy burden it's a burden that's impossible because you can't make sure all those things are happening but if I walk with Jesus and if I take on that burden, just walking with him and trusting in him and, um, you know, giving up everything for him, at least everything, you know, maybe not literally, but, uh, you know, in my, in my mind, then that burden is a light burden. Okay. I don't have to have all these things to make me happy. I don't have to have all these things to make me feel safe because God is everything to me. So. That's one way to renew your mind about anxiety, to let go of anxiety eating. And I also want to tell you uh, what you could do too. In this book, Say Goodbye to Emotional Eating, there's section three is I Need Chocolate, and that is the emotional eating section, okay? And of course, anxiety eating is emotional eating. So some other exercises you could do are casting your cares on God, not food. I deserve this treat because we think we deserve treats when life is hard. I have when you're anxious, emotional eating, going to God versus going to food. My life is a wreck. Of course I'm worried, or I wish I had my old life back. So you can do all these little exercises. Some will be renewing your mind about food. Some will be renewing your mind about life. Some will be truth journaling. Some will be option charts like we just did. Uh, some will be scripture meditation. So there's lots of ways there to try and find to, to renew your mind. And I think you probably be able to find some resources on my website as well, barbrowley.com, or, or searching for one of my podcasts, Christian Habits Podcast or Taste for Truth Podcast. Okay, well, I hope this has been helpful, and I will talk to you another time.